uh, a lot of and of course a lot of conspirators or I mean conspiracy theory will start to come in saying that whether the vaccination, uh, the vaccine that we receive uh, are actually effective or not. Uh, so especially uh, uh, the question about Sinovac. Uh, so when I shared about this last week, uh, the MOH have not decided on the third dose. So immediately on Monday, uh, on the 21st of September, if not mistaken, uh, KJ already said uh, we were going to start third dose uh, uh, vaccination for special groups. So I'm not going to talk more about the third doses. Then, of course, uh, in regards to the uh, sharing today, I, uh, I think uh, um, what another hypothesis is definitely the high reservoir of a virus uh, among our adolescents and children who are less than 18 years old. So this is one of the reasons why uh, WHO and globally, including Malaysia, we start to roll out adolescents and eventually, I believe, it will be children vaccination. So let's... Let's look at uh, COVID-19 uh, among less than 18 years old. So no doubt from the beginning of the pandemic, we knew that uh, there are all these group, age, this age group have a lower risk of infection uh, as well as severe disease. So looking at the data, uh, the trend of infection uh, comparing last year and this year, unfortunately have actually increased due to the uh, different variants, especially, especially the latest uh, Delta variant. In 2020, only 10% under 18 are infected. Uh, 15% in 2021. Let's look at Malaysian data. Uh, 12,000 uh, in 2020, uh, under 18 years old, but until uh, for the past nine months, uh, January until 21st of September, we have 410,000 cases uh, of COVID-19 un under 18 years old. So you can see there is definitely a huge uh, a fold of increase among uh, uh, under 18 years old. So besides that, uh, Besides the infection, to me personally, I would say a long-term COVID-19 impact is not only about infection itself. Uh, a lot of the times it's also about the non-COVID, the collateral damage. For the past 18 months, uh, I don't, I mean, there's no physical school uh, for our children. My girl have not been to the church. I have not been to the church. There's no public appearance, I would say, uh, for 12 years old and below. They are just, I mean, we have to hide them at home. And then uh, even with the dine-in policy now, uh, because of the under 18, if you are not vaccinated, you're not allowed to dine-in. So that is impossible for us to arrange family and social activity. Uh, so, so these are the controversies. I mean, these are the difficulties that we are facing uh, besides the infection of the COVID-19. So at, at this moment, uh, 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 the adolescent vaccination, the vaccine that we use in Malaysia will be Pfizer. Uh, which is a mRNA, uh, mRNA vaccine. So this is uh, the only vaccine that is proven, I mean, that is approved globally. Uh, you have a FDA uh, in USA or an EMA uh, approval in Europe. So uh, uh, approval is definitely no doubt for 16 and 18 years old because uh, the clinical study initially, before even the adult getting the vaccination, the original clinical study actually recruiting 16 years old and above. Uh, so, so that's why uh, 16 and 18 years old is a full approval by the FDA uh, US for, for vaccination. Uh, for the 12 and 15 years old at the moment is still a FDA emergency use approval uh, because uh, this is another uh, new study, uh, new trial, uh, uh, which is still going on. So the doses, uh, I believe everyone should know uh, is two doses. Uh, each dose is three weeks apart. So it's a similar adult strength. So as, 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 as I mentioned, uh, things really go very fast when I present uh, to the, I mean, when I address uh, the Iban church last week, uh, this was not out. So immediately the next day, KJ said going to vaccinate the third doses uh, for booster. And for globally, Pfizer actually announced they actually have already have data, preliminary data, which is not published in any medical journal yet because it's actually a, a phase two to phase three trial. So, so for... So, so anything actually you need to have a phase three trial approval before the uh, uh, medicine board or FDA able to actually approve that. So at the moment, uh, uh, this clinical trial basically they're recruiting five to 11 years old. So generally uh, when you look at the five to 11 years old, they have actually a 2,268 participants. The dose is actually one third lower as compared to the adult dose. Adult is 30 microgram each dose, two doses apart, three weeks. But for children 5 to 11, uh, the clinical study, uh, they, they, I mean, the, the dose that they approved is 10 microgram each dose, so one third lower. 
So from, from that 2,000 plus participants, the between uh, 5 to 11 years old children, given the vaccination, you will get the similar neutralizing antibody. So it means it's effective, that's number one. And then there is no uh, additional side effects uh, that, that uh, are different as compared to uh, uh, 16 to 25 or actually 11 to, uh, uh, sorry, 12 to 15 years old. So, I, so let's come to a quick side effects. So we, I mean, uh, everyone of us, uh, majority already get our vaccine. So we have re had the first hand experience in terms of the side effect. So I think the main controversy or the main concern among parents uh, for uh, Pfizer vaccination or adolescent children vaccination would be none other than myocarditis. So let's talk about uh, common side effects. So all of us experience that pain and the injection side, tiredness, headache, chills, muscle pain, fever, joint pain, which is more likely uh, after the sec second dose. Uh, so there are even hypotheses to say that uh, young people, you will get a more uh, more. I mean, the common side effect is more profound. And then you also have clinical study will, will tell you that if you have side effect, it means that the neutralizing antibody uh, 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 level could be higher because your body is react towards, towards it. So these are the common side effect. Uh, so for myself, uh, yes, I, I get ex uh, more uh, muscle pain and fatigue, especially after the second dose. Other than that, me and Len, I think we are all fine. So I believe everyone has the first hand uh, experience in that. So as I said, myocarditis and pericarditis is the main concern among uh, uh, adolescent or children vaccination. So quickly to explain what is myocarditis, basically it means that uh, um, inflammation of the heart muscle, it means myocarditis. So uh, the heart is actually being uh, 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 surrounded by a membrane, membranous tissue, which we call it pericardium. So pericarditis, basically, it means that inflammation over that uh, membrane, uh, which is overlying or surrounding the heart. So based on the uh, data that we learned from 16 to 25, I'm sorry, 16 years old and above, so especially they recruit the 16 to 25 years old, uh, the uh, incidence of uh, myocarditis is actually particularly more common after second dose more common in younger population. The, the data actually tell us that there's more common in those who are 16 to 39 years old. Male is definitely more, more common than female, at least five times more common. Uh, the onset, it can be as early as after second dose of the uh, vaccination until the first week of vaccination. Okay, sorry, it gets stuck. Mm. Okay, so the clinical presentation that we need to look at, okay, I mean, I mean signs and symptoms that we specifically look for in terms of myocarditis and pericarditis will be chest pain, shortness of breath, and palpitation. These are the three main uh, symptoms that we look for. So, uh, so that's why I believe uh, uh, those children who have our adolescents that have gone for vaccination, 16 to 17 years old, they are all brief after vaccination. You should not actually do heavy duty or uh, extreme exercise, should, should get enough rest. So in case you have symptoms like chest pain, shortness of breath and palpitation, uh, then you may you actually have to see, uh, uh, I mean, contact your, your doctor, personal, I mean, your own doctor, or actually drop by an emergency department. So as I mentioned to the Iban uh, church last week, so it's essential if, so, so, so it's essential after the vaccination for our uh, adolescent, uh, make sure they don't do any strenuous exercise for at least two weeks. So in case they have any symptoms, especially the red color symptoms that I highlighted, um, you get, um, I mean, talk to your doctor uh, or do you pop by any emergency department? So the important message that I will, I mean, we, we need to know will be uh, what are the symptoms that you have? And very importantly, please talk to, tell them that you have just received your vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination, uh, maybe within a week. So that uh, this will actually prone to the doctor to actually really look hard for myocarditis or pericarditis. So generally, uh, uh, the doctor will actually do an ECG and there are certain blood tests that we can actually do, uh, especially in terms of my uh, cardiac enzyme to see uh, is there any elevation or not. So, so the treatment uh, will actually, um, sorry, the treatment will actually be, a, uh, okay, the, 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 let's say really this is a myocarditis from the clinical data uh, that was shared globally. 
generally they are self-limiting. So basically it means that we admit you and then we give you painkiller because you have chest pain or whatsoever. We give you anti-inflammatory. Uh, then we observe you uh, in the hospital for a few days. Then subsequently, most of the time, uh, you recover fully. So, 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 so in, in directly or uh, in a short uh, sentence is we admit you for symptomatic treatment only. So mainly painkiller, uh, insects for, as an anti-inflammatory. If more severe, sometimes we may give you a few doses of steroid, mainly to decrease that inflammation. So it would not actually cause a long-term uh, 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 sort of a residual or uh, uh, long-term side effect. So this was actually published uh, in one of the important uh, journal uh, among the cardiology. So let's look at uh, the risk of myocarditis between 12 to 17 years old. As I mentioned, uh, the younger you are, the risk of myocarditis is actually higher, no doubt. If you are male, your boys are more common than your, female, than your girls. So let's look at males. So this is comparing to every one, oh, sorry, one million uh, 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 vaccination. So these are all Pfizer mRNA vaccination. So you have about uh, 56 to 69 myocarditis cases that they collected in a 16, 12 to 17 years old male. So if you divide it into percentage is 0.0056 to 0.0069%. So comparing to uh, uh, the benefit that we gain after, I mean, your, the, the children gain after the vaccination would be, uh, we all know that vac vaccination mainly uh, uh, is mainly to prevent uh, uh, severe illness as well as mortality. So, so from, from the data, uh, after the two calculations, so actually you prevent about 8,500 COVID-19 cases over 1 uh, million vaccination, about 200 hospitalization, about 40 ICU admission, and one death. So, so very clearly, it actually uh, try to highlight that the benefit is more than the risk. So this is another way to look at it. Uh, similarly, just want to summarize, the incidence of myocarditis is more profound, especially the original data tells us 16 to uh, 39, uh, 39 years old. Uh, then if they really uh, pull the age group lower, so again, you have a more myocarditis there, but the benefit is definitely outweighing uh, the risk of uh, uh, side effect of myocarditis among all the age group. So I was talking to you just now as a doctor, uh, as a scientist, uh, basically I'm just uh, vomiting out whatever data that I have. So I think it's more important to talk to you, uh, I mean, uh, address the church uh, in a more human way. Huh? So I will be talking to you as a parent now. Uh, so uh, I think all, all the church, I mean, everybody knows that we have two kids. Uh, uh, the girl is dying, currently six years old, or going to be seven, probably one next year. The boy is four years old, uh, uh, Darik. So Darik is actually uh, have a, a developmental delay. So. Um, so the impact of COVID-19 to, to, to my kids, I would say uh, I'm not too focusing on the uh, uh, infectious part because all in all, we know that the risk of them getting COVID-19 is low. That is number one. Even they get COVID-19 is normally a common flu. Oh? Uh, so I don't deny that. So I, what, what I actually uh, very disheartening is actually my girl actually have attended three virtual uh, church camps. So try to, uh, if we, we are young before, we knew that church camp, you should be going to the church, or you sleep in the church, you, you interact with other kids, you really learn uh, Bible, uh, uh, craft, do craft work uh, with the kids and with the teacher uh, together. But uh, she can only uh, sitting in front of a computer and do that. So to me, that is a, a great loss of uh, learning uh, for my girl. Uh, until yesterday, uh, actually, when, when another sharing that I want to share is my girl, uh, Diane, suddenly told me that, okay, I was with her, uh, went out uh, to tapau food yesterday. Then suddenly in the car, she tell me that, daddy, daddy, I, I want to become your dog. I, I cannot understand what does that mean. So until I, so, uh, so because she cannot get down from the car, so, so I parked my car right in front of the restaurant. I went in and up, I went in and tap out. And at the Kaki Lima day, there is actually this swear dog. Then suddenly it popped my mind what it, what it means. It means that a dog can even, I mean, even a dog can actually hang around in the park or anywhere. It can be seen, you get know I me? Mean? And you will not get fined. But Diane, as being a children, cannot be allowed to go out. Uh, that's how sad it is huh? because uh, without vaccination. So for Dari, of course, uh, because of the no vaccination uh, status at the moment, so a lot of uh, uh, occupational therapy, physiotherapy are actually being delayed. Uh, 
so that is again uh, will have a huge impact, uh, which is non-infectious impact uh, to him uh, because of the pandemic. So, so for me, uh, of course now I do not have to be worried. I mean, I, the, okay, the decision have not come whether I, I will sign the consent or not. So when I talk about this to Len, I will, I will I most likely I will say I will, I will sign for it mainly because I want my girl to start to live, I mean, to be seen in the public, she need, need to interact with people. She need to grow up and uh, interact with people. She cannot be, I cannot keep her in the house uh, uh, forever. So in order to move on, uh, I believe uh, uh, vaccination for her is needed and uh, more so for Dari. So this is uh, uh, my, my point of uh, uh, thought. So, so another thing to look at it is, of course, huh, during the Iban church, one of the, uh, 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 um, I mean, our church member actually asked a very uh, correct question. So, so indirectly, we, we knew that um, it's not much benefit. Okay, so, so I do agree that there is not much of benefit for our kids to get uh, a vaccination. Benefit in terms of uh, uh, decreasing the disease, hospitalization, ICU or death, because all in all, we know that the, the chances of them getting severe COVID are relatively low. But uh, what I'm trying to emphasize is, uh, there is actually uh, uh, beyond, uh, a lot of other points that is beyond uh, uh, your, I mean, all kids, their own self, uh, when they receive a, a COVID-19 vaccination. So, so that's why uh, we have this slogan, Lindong Diri, Lindong Sendiri. So for very elderly people who are taking, uh, or high-risk people, when you take COVID-19 vaccination, I believe the weight of Lindongi Sendiri is much more as compared to Lindongi uh, Semua, the public. But for kids or adolescents, a lot of times, uh, their vaccination is mainly so that you can decrease that uh, virus reservoir in the public so that you will not be infecting other uh, high-risk group, which is elderly or any other high-risk group. So the, in the spirit of Lindungi Samoa, uh, uh, I will actually uh, highly recommend uh, the adolescent as well as the children, you sh I mean, should, should consent for them to get vaccination so that the world can really uh, uh, go back to how it was. So that is the way towards endemic to me. Uh, and of course, I have, uh, I, I have already highlighted uh, the benefit uh, is definitely outweighing the risk of uh, uh, vaccination. So I think uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. Lau. Um, thank you for update. Uh, maybe we, we open to, um, to whoever want to clarify or ask any question because this is really the most important question now in in uh, that especially those who have uh, children in the adolescent age 